Hi. We're going to differentiate on an osteoporotic fracture versus a pathologic fracture. When we say osteoporotic fracture, we get porous bone or fragile bone because of the low bone mass. When we say pathologic fracture, we have weakening of the bone or fracturing of the bone because you have a primary bone lesion or a metastatic bone lesion. So when you have metastatic bone lesion, it means you have malignancy elsewhere in the body. For example, in the chest, you have a breast CA or lung CA. Or for example, you have some pelvic uh, malignancy like uh, prostate or rectal CA. For our purposes, we're going to give examples on uh, metastatic pathologic fracture. Okay, so first we have abnormal signal in the vertebral body plus the pedicle. In this example, this is a T1 weighted study, and we have abnormal signal here in the vertebral body, and then when you scroll it, you can see that the pedicle is also involved. So this one is the pathologic fracture, while this one we see abnormal signal only in the vertebral body, but with sparing of the pedicle. So why is this so? You might have, we might have encountered in the past that when you say pedicular involvement, it's actually um, ominous or suggests a metastatic process. And this is because in the past, they have noted that the pedicles were involved or eroded on x-rays. But it has been researched and was found out that pedicular involvement, when seen, is actually uh, a later stage of the disease. Because in, metastatic, in the metastatic process, you first have involvement of the vertebral body, which later on spread to the pedicle and the posterior elements. So in that study... Um, this one, I encircled it for you there. They studied uh, the four areas of the vertebral body. They wanted to know if um, a metastatic process would start in the pedicle or does it start in the vertebral body. And there's, they further subdivided it into anterior part of the vertebral body and the posterior part of the vertebral body. And they found out that the most common um, involvement is the posterior part of the vertebral body. And they uh, theorize that this might be due to the basi vertebral vein. This is the location of the basi, basi vertebral vein. You can see here that it pierces at the posterior aspect of the vertebra. And the basi vertebral vein is a tributary of the Batson's plexus. Batson's plexus um, are longitudinal veins here, um, which are valveless veins. When you say valveless, they have no protection against reflux. So, for example, if you have a patient with uh, a, a cancer of the rectum or the prostate, which is drained by the periprostatic venous plexus, this drainage can have an access um, or can be drained to the internal iliac vein and has a connection to the Batson's venous plexus. So from Batson's venous plexus, it can access your bones or the vertebra. Why does this happen? Because instead of draining from the iliac vein into the IVC, there may be times when the patient is straining, for example, in urination or defecation, you increase the intrathoracic pressure, and that increased intrathoracic pressure will um, facilitate the drainage of blood 
from your pelvis to the Batson's venous plexus or the uh, which is a tributary of the internal venous plexus going to your uh, bones or the vertebra bypassing the lungs. So going back to our example, so um, aside from um, these signs, we're going to move on to this one. Abnormal signal in the entire vertebral body is suggestive of a pathologic fracture. It is because when you see that the bone marrow is involved, and where's the bone marrow concentrated? Red marrow. Red marrow is concentrated here in the anterior portion of the vertebra or the vertebral body. In contrast, the pedicle and the posterior portions like the spinous process and the uh, spinous process and the transverse process are mainly cortical bone. So, when you have um, an, an bone marrow replacement process, that neoplastic uh, process will like to live somewhere where there is rich red marrow, and that is the uh, vertebral body. And in addition to that, we have this theory that metastasis in the vertebral body comes from a reflux from the Batson's plexus and that Batson's plexus is valveless. And one of the tributary of Batson's plexus is this basi vertebral vein, draining this posterior portion of the vertebral body. So again, in pathologic fracture, we have entire sig abnormal signal. In this case, a very dark signal in T1 replacing the normal, um, somewhat uh, hyper-intense signal in the vertebral body because... It has um, a combination of red and yellow marrow, and yellow marrow has abundant fat. In contrast, when you have osteoporotic fracture, you have this horizontal band and a portion of spared fatty marrow. Would, would we expect sparing of the fatty marrow in a metastatic process? Uh, it's less likely to do so because it would like to involve the entire vertebral body. So in this example, there's a definite portion or a band that is affected. And then, you have sparing of an area here in the posterior aspect. In addition, when you see a fracture line or a low signal line here, which demarcates the uh, normal and the abnormal marrow signal, um, it is said that it is characteristic of an osteoporotic fracture, which makes sense because of the pathophysiology. Next, we also...